Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Beyond the Album Cover with yours truly, Jarrell Mason, where we get inside the entertainment industry for those in the know and give them their flowers while they're here to be celebrated. So today I have a rare treat for you. This gentleman right here rarely gives interviews. And if you've listened to any form of pop music within the past three to four decades, his fingerprints have been all over it from Backstreet Boys, 3T, Robin, Five, his solo career, he's the secret sauce with everything that came out of Sharon Pop Studios with Max Martin and the late great Dennis Pop. So ladies and gentlemen, please give a big round of applause and welcome to Beyond the Album Cover to Mr. Herbie Crescio. Herbie, welcome to Beyond the Album Cover, bro, and it's a pleasure to have you on. Blessings and salutations, my brother. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. Not a problem. And I appreciate you coming on because like I stated at the top of the intro, you rarely give interviews. So let me go into that question before we dive into your career. So what made you want to come on to the podcast knowing that you rarely give interviews? Um, you. I don't, I don't connect with, I connect with people spiritually. I see people's spirits long before I see them. Um, your patience, your dedication, you, you just, you constantly just kept, even though I'm so busy and I'm doing my thing and I'm doing music, and it was just your level of dedication to art and the, and, and the way that you kept coming back to me, you know, take your time, you know, when you're ready, get at me. It, 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 it's the, it, it, it would have been anybody who didn't do interviews, but a person like you, they would have to step up. It, it, it's, it's hard to find genuine people who are genuinely interested in what you're doing, you are, and that's why I did it. I mean, I get I get requests. Trust me, I get requests on a daily basis, and the answer is just no. But and if you ask me to do it again, yeah, I'd do it again because you're people's. <laughs> yeah, so. we're, we're, we're we're fam, and that's what it's all about: being genuine, and it's not about clickbait, unlike other websites. Real. All right, so Real let's talk. You yes, sir. A, you have a way about you, man. You have a way about you. And, and, and for me, it, it's connecting. If, if I connect with someone and I feel them and I feel them spiritually, I feel that they, they have a, the, the right intention. Yeah, I'll, I'll do it. I'm there. But most of the time I find that intention in music. I find that expression in music. You know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. why I'm there. I'm in that world. So, right. For yes. 30 years. Yeah, so let's go ahead and dive right into it. What was your journey like going up in the UK and in Barbados and the music scene in the UK where you have Lovers Rock, Northern Soul, and then your underground pirate stations like your Kiss FMs and other stations where you could only get urban underground music, unlike not on mainstream radio such as BBC Radio 1 and uh, Capital Radio? I, well, I mean, I grew up in, in my, with my family, my mum, my sister, my brother, and my mum was just, a, just my mum and us. And I grew up in a household that was just blended music from Glenn Miller to uh, Ashford and Simpson to you name it. My mum played everything. So the influences that, that, that walk with me today are those same influences, those same people. Uh, everything from Lovers Rock, you, you can go across the board. Moving to Barbados was probably the best thing that ever happened, the toughest thing, but the best thing that ever happened to me. Because in England, you're, you're, you're a brother or a sister and you're doing your thing, but you're not really noticed until you, 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 you've got to fall into the system, so to speak, before you can fall out and stand up. In the Caribbean, you, 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 you've got to stand up, man. You, you, you've got to represent what your skills, you've got to show your skills. You have to show what you can do. And it's a, it's a tough place to grow up, but it's one of the best, highest levels of education in the world. And uh, having, being surrounded by my people gave me the confidence and the strength to not be afraid to be who I am. I'm not, look, bro, I'm gonna be real. I'm not like everybody else, I'm weird. I am weird, I know that. I don't, I'm, I'm the thumb that doesn't fit, you know? But growing up in the Caribbean, they taught me that being the thumb that doesn't fit means that there's another hand for you to, to, to fit to. Be proud of who you are, stand up for who you are. So it was, a, it was an amazing time. I, I grew up around Supercat. I, in the Caribbean, I grew up around Supercat and Barrington Levy and, and Jimmy Cliff and I'm 
being on stage, performing with these guys from a young, really, really young age. I, I mean, I've been on stage since I was 15, 16. And um, Eddie Grant and all of these amazing vocalists and, and artists and Nicholas Branker and all of these incredible people that gave me the opportunity, believed in me. And I just needed a place to fit, to figure out where my skill sets would fit. So I think if I would, if I could do it all again, I'd do it exactly the same way. Mm -hmm. And for those Caribbean, from, England, from England to the Caribbean, yeah, I, I've been, I've been so blessed, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and for those of you that don't know, if it wasn't for reggae and the Caribbean influence, we would not have hip hop because DJ Cool Hurt took from those sound systems over in Jamaica, the selectors, all of that good stuff, and brought it over to New York. And we have hip hop, which will turn 50 in a couple of years. So hip hop and reggae has always been linked. Always, man, always, you know. I mean, there's so many people from Barbados that are in the music industry that have been there. And Jamaica, every, world over Caribbean. The influences are unbelievable. You've got Grandmaster Flash, you've got Dougie Fresh from Barbados, you've got you, it, 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 the, the level of influences from this tiny little string of islands that has turned the world inside out. It, 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 there's something, you want to see what miracles look like? Go look at the Caribbean. It's right there. So you, you can't miss it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it, it's a beautiful thing, man. We've, we're, 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 such, we're so blessed. We're so blessed as people. We're so blessed as... It's, it's a rough game. It's a rough game. It, 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 it's a hard game, man. I always say this to... I always say this to people when they get involved in the music industry, when I, whether I'm teaching or I'm doing music, I tell people this and I say it with honor. I say, welcome to the music industry, the most cutthroat industry in the world. This shit can be as hard as, excuse my French, this can be as hard as cut as drug dealing. Or if you're smart and you play the game like chess, it can be the greatest adventure you'll ever take. Mm -hmm. I agree. Know the business because it's 90% business, 10% show. And if you sign anything, you're going to get screwed. It's how you sign things. Don't, you know, the, the, a lot of people are getting the, the misconception of, of paperwork and, and, the, and the art of business and the business world um, and the legalese and everything. But if you don't know, if you don't know the rules to chess, don't sit down at the board. Mm -hmm. Study don't it. Don't sit down at the board. Nobody sits down at a chess board and plays checkers. You play chess, play chess, learn the rules. Then you'll learn the art of the game. Then you can win in the game. Then you can get good at the game and you can become a classic player. That is, that is, that is the art of the game. And that's pretty much the same thing in music. You can't run away from the paperwork. You can't run away from the situation. But you don't have to be on the board. You do have to learn how to play. Mm -hmm. Now, just cutting your teeth in the business, did you always want to be in the front or was it primarily behind the scenes as a songwriter and producer? And what was that process like shopping your demos around, hoping to get a song placement? I, 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 started, out as, I started out as an artist. I started out as an artist uh, and it was all I wanted to do. It was all I just to get on stage and, and reach out. And that's, oh, that's all I knew. Um, after a while, I started to realize that what I had to say, the way I wanted to express it, I couldn't express it. So I started noticing that I could, I could express those, those emotions and express those feelings through other people. So I started to write and um, that's when I met Dennis. That's when I met Dennis Pop and, and it was just crazy. I, he was DJing in a club and I used to go to this club every night. Just, just because I hadn't, because I just, I had just moved to Sweden and I hadn't really, really, really know the place. And I was just, I used to go to this club every night. And he would DJ, and then one night I'm sitting next to the DJ booth. And one night he just handed the mic to me, and I was like, "You want me to do with that?" And he was like, "You've been waiting, so go for it." And that's when our friendship, that's how our friendship began, and that, that's my, that was my best friend. We became, that's how we started. He trusted me, and. It was, it was after my first album and we had great success and we had like five or six number ones in Canada and that was the first, second project, the first project was with Layla Kay and we broke every record and it was an incredible, incredible time. But 
during that time, I, that's when I started to realize I can't, I can't get, I hear these other things in my head that I can't, I can't, I can't put through a mic. I can't hit those octaves. I can't hit, I hear choirs and orchestras and instrumentation that I can't, it doesn't fit me. And the, the level, the, 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 the amount of genres that I was picking up on, I just, just, I just needed to get a way to get that out. And Dennis was just basically like, look, you need to choose. You want to be an artist or you want to do what you were born to do? And I was like, what was I born to do? You know what I mean? It was that kind of young, you know, inexperienced. And we just, we just dived in head first. Everybody thought we had a plan and we were sort of constructed. Uh, you're looking at a bunch of guys who just believed in music and weren't, weren't afraid to fail. Mm -hmm. Did Max come into failure, the picture during this point? Failure is your best friend. This is the mistake. Failure is your best friend. If you keep fearing failure, it will chase you like the devil. Failure is your best friend because when you get used to, when a child get, gets used to falling over, they dust off their knee, they keep on running. Failure is your best friend. A million failures, one success. Right. I agree because if you look at fail, you break it down as an acronym, first attempt in learning. That's it, man. That's it. And, and people won't notice your failures. They won't. I mean, George Clinton said it best. He said, your, 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 your mistakes make you legendary. They really, truly do. They really, really do. And you, you, it, it, it's, it, the, I believe that the, the adventure is to, to see where you're going and not worry about what, what other people are seeing. You know, mm -hmm. you need to see where you're going. You got to follow your own yellow brick road. It will take you around the bend. It will take you up. Lord knows it will take you down. But you know what I mean? It's 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 an adventure. It's an adventure and a half. Man. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry, you got me because I haven't done this. In, I haven't done this type of thing in such a long time. I'm actually rem I'm actually seeing things from back then that I haven't seen in such a long time. That's weird. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's okay, man. Like I said, if you go on a tangent, by all means, because we're here for all the knowledge that you have. So by the time you hooked up with Dennis, was this right around where it was when he was working with Ace of Base or was this pre-Ace of Base? No, no. Ace of Base and I, a Ace of Base and myself, we signed to a label called Mega in Denmark. We signed on the same day, the same room. Um, before that, before Ace of Base, before Chevron, Dennis and I, Dennis was working at a studio with one of the most incredible producers called Douglas Carr. And the, it was Douglas Carr, myself, and Dennis. The first song we did was a song called Which Lady Gaga Absolutely Loves Him. That was um, Open Sesame for Layla Kay. And um, that was the first project we did. And then I wrote the album. First thing I ever did was write this album and do these songs with Dennis. And then um, it just took off. It just exploded. I mean, it went, bruh, it went nuts. And uh, it went gold and platinum everywhere and all this stuff. And then Dennis took me aside one night. We were in Germany one night. He said, listen, we're doing, we're going to do something new. I said, I'm with you. Let's do it. What are we going to do? What else are we going to, what else, can, what can't we do? What are we going to do? And we went to this place. It was an old stu It was an old movie cinema theater type place. And it had went in, went downstairs. It was, hey, this is going to be the main room. There's going to be some microphones going to be there. And it's going to be over there. And it's going to be this. And I'm looking at this place going, what's this? This is going to be. This is going to be the spot. This is where we're going to start our dreams. This is where we're just going to just do what we want, how we want, when we want. And that was Tom Talman, then Douglas Carr, Dennis. Me. And that was when the doors of Sheryl first opened. Oh no, there wasn't Martin, there wasn't, there was people coming and going. That was before Andreas Carlson, who I absolutely adore, and Trilla, Christian Lundin, and all of the rest of the guys. It was just us. And we had just, that was, and that was just before Ace of Base, you know? And it just, it, 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 the doors opened, and man, uh, it was like a hurricane. It was just, we were free to do what we wanted to do. We didn't really, we experimented. We, were, we, we, we did songs that we thought might work. We, we take, the minute we finished the track, we go straight to the club. We just play it in the club, see how people reacted. And if they liked it, 
it was out that's it put it out it was it was that kind of free will you know mm -hmm. it's not like it a lot crazy. of trial and error yeah we spent I, man, I can remember one summer we spent the in my wife went nuts we spent the entire summer in the studio ground floor next to the dbx's and, the, and, the, and all of the sound equipment and we sat there for an entire summer i didn't go home sat there tweaking beats sampling kick drums creating our own sounds our own kick drum sounds our own ev everything you know sampled it down everything man, not not one moment did we get tired we were just it was it was a dream you know we didn't even listen we didn't even know most of the time i remember one time we were we were working on working on backstreet boys and there was a bunch of crates outside the studio out in the hallway me dennis martin were in there we're just full on as usual and i go outside and i'm looking at the crates like Keep bringing, all these, keep bringing all these stupid crates in here. Get these things out of here. And someone said to me, you need to open the crates. So what, what's, in, what's in them? It was all of our awards. Nobody cared. There was these awards in crates, dude. Nobody, ask anyone at Sharon who could tell you the story. We never opened them. They were just there. I mean, if you see my home, I, don't, I only have the awards that I've recently got. All the other awards are in storage. They just, we did that, been there. Let's move on. It was it was that atmosphere, you know. Right, you're just I doing it for the love of it. Yeah, I really wish a lot of people. Would, I really wish. I really hope and pray for the people out there that they get to experience that type of freedom in music. Because man, it it it, 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 it takes you to another level. Yeah, because it was crazy over here in the States how Ace of Base took off because I was reading Clive Davis's memoir and how Ace of Base was making noise overseas. And I believe it was only supposed to be either a one album or one single deal in the US in Arister. But once the sign blew up, it was number one album, number one song for the year of 94. And no international act has done that since. So were you guys listening Actually, to what was coming on in the States and kind of tailoring it to what was going on over in Sweden? Yeah, actually, it was it was um, thanks to a guy named Morris Hawksworth. Um, Morris Hawksworth was the A and R for Mega, and it was the song that blew up that did twenty four million out twenty four million singles was a song called All That She Wants. Uh, that was the first single, and I can remember Morris traveled, dude. Morris traveled the entire world and walked into every office with the CD with this in his in his bag. And shot that deal worldwide. Nobody was taking it. No one was saying anything. Then he finally met up with Clive. And I mean, I adore Clive Davis because Clive Davis has this, he has a, he has an ear. Man, he has an ear. And and that's the that's the difference, you know. But that's the story. That's how it really happened. It was all Morris. And Morris took it all around Europe, all around the world. And once once the bright ear it got to the right ear, it was gone. It, that was it. Yeah, because it was ear candy. I mean, like I said, it was the gangbusters here in the U.S. But I want to go a little bit to a pivot and talk about Eurovision and the importance of Eurovision because you had acts such as Celine Dion, Julio Iglesias, ABBA, the song Waterloo ended up winning Eurovision for the year that it entered. Can you explain the importance of Eurovision? Eurovision is... I don't. I don't get. I don't get in, in. I'm not into Eurovision as per se as I would be a producer or a songwriter for songs. Um, it, it's 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 not it's not my environment. It's it's not my musically not my environment. That's not to say that I wouldn't ever. It's just that until now it hasn't been. Eurovision is so it's so important in Europe. It opens the most. It opens doorways for artists, for songwriters, producers that would never open. They wouldn't. You listen to 90% of the songs coming out of Eurovision, there is no market for it. There isn't a market out there. There is no market out there right now for what is playing on Eurovision until Eurovision comes out. They, it, it, it's, a, it's giving people another opportunity, you know, to step away from one, one direction. And maybe you don't fit in this direction, but maybe your sound fits here. You know, there's been, there's been rare occasions like ABBA, and like my dear friend Maureen, who 
did Euphoria, which is really funny because the guy who did Euphoria with Maureen, Peter Burstrom, Peter and I started our careers together. He was actually my music, my very first music partner. We worked, that was a very, 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 very before Dennis, before everything. He turns around and he breaks every record in Eurovision history with Laureen. And there's, on rare occasion, these songs cross over. But the beautiful thing is, is that just because you don't fit in that area of music, and that genre of music, there's this other area of music that's just as big, that provides a space for your skill set. Do you know what I mean? There's a different age group, a different demographic, a different appreciation. So, so if you don't fit there, you can fit there. And it, it's, it is that important. It's as important as pop music. People make as much fun as they want as pop. But I'm a firm believer that if some, if I was once told that, um, someone said to me one time, um, yeah, but you just made pop. That's corny. I said, that may be true. But I'm the best damn calm corny maker on the planet. That's the difference. Just because that's the difference. I believe in what I do. If you're into pop, people call it corny, make the best corn you can, then get the corn. Mm -hmm. Get that money. You know, money is the product of hard work, it's not the end all be all. But back to the point, these areas of music, the Eurovision Song Contest is is as important as the rest of the industry simply because it provides another area for people to feel as important and be heard. And that's vital. You know, that is really vital because without it, if you're not into this, then you don't, then you don't believe that you should be doing music and the world could miss something classic. You know? Mm. It's as important as the opera. It's as important as rock. It's important as... It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a machine. It's a, it, a, an animal on its own. And it, and it, it, it provides so much for so many people. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because when we think of acts out of Sweden, we think of Ace of Base, ABBA, Roxette. But before we get into Backstreet Boys, I want to set the stage for the people that there was a boy band out of the UK that set the stage for all other boy bands from Europe to be successful phenomenons. I'm talking about Jason, Howard, Robbie, Gary, and Mark, collectively known as Take That. So what was it about Take That that made them special? And for me, as a music lover, I felt had the Nobody Else album would have been pushed more in America, they would have had more hits other than just Back for Good here in the States. Mm. I, I that, Take That is one of the bands I wish I was involved in. I really do, because Robbie's, Robbie's just an amazing, amazing friend, amazing person. The whole band is incredible. Um, they did, they, but what they did was answer a question. There are times in the music industry where the industry seems to only be catering to a specific set of people. And then there's an empty space for these people and, and they're over here just as valuable. What Take That did was answer that space. That's what they did. There was an empty space there. There was a space where, why don't we have a, a band that does this? Or why England's asking for this? There was a space and, and take that build it and that was vital i mean their fan base today to this very day is huge you know and and i don't know i i think i think the difference between me and a lot of people is i don't see genres i just don't i i, I don't see genres in music i i i see music and i read it as such and, and, and our job as songwriters and producers and look, we, are, we, we work in an environment where we have to have our emotions on our sleeves, on our cuffs, right? Our job, is to, our job is to express feelings and the words that the ordinary people out there can't find. We need to, we, 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 we answer that, we answer the situation, we, can't, we remedy the situation or we, we, we express what they're going through or, or provide an, an emotional sense where we take you out of your mundane and into the stratosphere and bring you back down safely. This, this is what we do. This is, this is who we are. And it's not really, a, it's not, it's really not about us per se. Nobody can actually tell you, no songwriter or producer can tell you that they wrote something. It comes through you. 
and you ain't nobody sit down and write nothing. If, if the universe puts that, it comes straight through you and it comes out. That's our job. We're conduits. You know what I mean? Mm. And 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 it's difficult for me to answer certain types of questions because I only see things as I've been blessed enough to be that channel. You know? And mm -hmm. my job is there's a bunch of people over there that need to, there's a bunch of, there's a, there's a beautiful set of mothers over there who are alone. I've got to write songs to tell them it's okay. There's an angry dude over there. I've got to tell him to calm down. I've got to express what, with, listen, my grandfather used to say this, if, 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 if aliens ever came to this planet and landed on this earth, they're not going to politicians, they're not going to government, they're coming to us. You know why? Because we're the ambassadors of the human heart. That's our job. Mm -hmm. that's, that's why I don't do interviews, because I'm too busy expressing, I'm too busy trying to find the words to fit your, how they feel, or to tell them it's gonna be all right, or somebody filled with anxiety or suicidal tendencies. My job is to soothe or ignite or activate or that's what I do. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Right. It's kind of hard to, it's hard to, sorry I sidetracked there, but. Y'all, y'all good brother. So with Take That splitting in 95, we have a little band in the U.S. called Bashy Boys coming over to Europe. We got it going on, wasn't a hit in the U.S., but it was big in Europe and Europe was used as their testing ground before they broke back big in America because Quit Playing Games was the song that broke them over here in America. So what was your first response when first seeing Backstreet Boys? I wrote that about my wife. <laughs> oh, wow, I did not know that. That's what we do at Beyond the Album Cover. We get the exclusives. We had, a, we, had a, we had an argument and I got, I remember we had an argument, I got on the bus I was on a bus at the time going to the studio and I just heard this thing in my head and I just heard the whole song. I ran in the studio and said, Dick, Dennis, Dennis, I got this track. You've got to go downstairs do this track now. He was like, no, 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 no. I, I, is it a ballad? I said, no, no, get Martin. I said, Martin, let's go. We've got to go do, we've got to go do this track. So we ran downstairs and it was literally an hour. Literally an hour. We sent it off to the boys. The album was just about to close. We sent it off to the boys. They reopened the album cutting this now and 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 that was it i mean it was it was the right time and the right expression you know and it just oh, everything everything i'm I, you know i speak with nick i mean i just spoke with nick last week i mean I'm still all very close and all still like family excuse me but it was the most magical experience I never thought I would have it again, but then, you know, with Five and with Robin, with all these other bands, this beautiful beautiful connection keeps happening. But with Bastry Boys, that's like the golden chapters. You know what I mean? Right, because it was crazy to think how before Backstreet broke in America, pop wasn't really in in the States until Spice Girls and Hanson mm. made it okay for Americans to start playing pop music again. And then Backstreet just came out the gate swinging. But my favorite cut that was not an, an album cut here in the States, but it was a B-side of the single for Quit Playing Games was Lay Down Beside Me. AJ sang the mess oh, out of that wow. record. Wow, like, wow, I, I forgot about Lay Down Beside Me, wow. Yeah, that should have been a single in the States. Very yeah. R&B driven, very smooth, and like I said, AJ knocked it out the park. Yeah, yeah, man. When you heard these boys, when these boys, when I remember when we did Show Me the Meaning of Being Lonely, and um, we were in, uh, we, were, we were recording the vocal, all our studios, which was Ava Studios at the time. And that when AJ and the guys, when they cut, when they started recording the vocals, look, you can say what you want. They, these boys, vocally, were just unbelievable. It was just a, just a joy just to come up with things to, for them to sing, cause, and they still are, but man, it, the hair on the back of your neck would stand up, the harmonies they would touch. It was just incredible. You just, it, and, I remember them cutting Joe with the meaning and I just sat there looking at them and 
my uh, AJ was cutting the vocal. And he was on, there's nowhere to run. I have no, and I'm sitting behind me and we're just sitting there looking like, oh my God, this is it. This is, you know, years later, we're sitting there watching the boys perform it with Elton John and, and all of these things. And it, it was just unbelievable, unbelievable adventure. You know, knock down the barriers, get out of the way of yourself. And the adventure can take you on some pretty awesome places, to some incredible places. Right, you know? and, right. And I don't know if you've seen this video on YouTube. There's a video of a young NSYNC performing in Europe, and they were singing snippets of Quit Playing Games. This was before they <laughs> broke big in America. Yes, Justin, JC, Joey, Lance, and Chris singing Quit Playing Games. So what was your reaction when you first saw a young NSYNC and knowing that, okay, Bashy Boys is all having success, but here we got another group that's going to do the same thing. I was in the studio. I was in the studio. I, I just come out of Studio A, and these young dudes were coming down the stairs, and I just came out of Studio A. Four of the guys, some of the guys went in the room. One of the guys was standing next to me. We were having this conversation. He says, you going to work on our album with us? And I said, uh, I, I don't have time, bro. I, I really would love to, but I don't have time. I've got, they got, I've got a bunch of other stuff in the other rooms to finish. But we, had, we really, really clicked. We got along. And I was like, my man, listen, I've got a funny guy. Because I, I want to hear you guys vocally. You know, just I just want to hear. And I heard them through the, through the door. And then the guy next to me, he started singing along with the harmonies. And um, I just looked at him and I said, oh my God, you guys are going to be huge. And I looked at the dude and I said, where are you from? Because your voice is unusual, man. And we clicked and I just gave him a hug. I said, man, this is, this is amazing. The excitement is amazing. And I was walking away and I went, yo, whoa, 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 what's your name again? He went, oh, Justin. I was like, oh, all right, Justin, stay up. It was that kind of emotion. They sounded incredible, dude. They just sounded just like, I mean, Backstreet Boys, you couldn't mess with them on harmonies. You couldn't, they were just five, six, seven, eight, and they would blow you away. The NSYNC just had this energy and you just, you just, you couldn't stop, you couldn't stop watching. It's just, but, but Justin, JC, all of them, amazing. Justin just had this, he just, he just knew. You know what I mean? It was it was a really exciting time. Nothing that came through the door was not exciting, wasn't willing to, to try something or go for something. I remember working with a band called, one of my amazing heavy metal bands called Drain. It was a, a four-piece girl band from Drain. Uh, uh, they, they, were, they were on tour with Black Sabbath. They were amazing. And I got to write, with, write for them. You know, and I, I wrote their hit, and it was just like co-wrote the hit with them, and these things would, wouldn't happen now because this, you know, these barriers and these walls. Get them out of the way because you're missing shit. Give me one second. Like I have a, a cat who's more intelligent than you. <laughs> She's trying to Go get ahead. outside. Hang Go on ahead. One sec. Go ahead. The 90s was great. Yeah, no idea, dude. The 90s was just. You had everything from Prodigy over there, NSYNC over there, Damage, you had m &8, you had Aaliyah, you had Monica, you had Robin, you had, and it was all different genres of music. And it was just, it was incredible. Yeah, it was. You know, you, you it was okay to like Prodigy and like Run DMC. It was all right to be into it, it, Slick Rick the Ruler and the Adventures of Slick Rick and, and then 10 minutes later you're listening to Metallica. It was fine. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's about music. Very diverse. I can remember being a kid listening to Top 40 Radio, watching MTV TRL. It was diverse across the board where you have rap metal, pop, R&B, and the soundtrack that you, Max, and Dennis have created. I had in my collection, I had Westlife CD, I had Fives CD, I had 3T Brotherhood on cassette, and I wore that out. So wow, talk my about, boys. Talk about 3T. Wow. Uh, man, you know, there's very few times in my life where I've connected with people. Like I said, I, I see their spirits long before I see them. The day we, the day, we got to, we got to, we got to LA. 
And Kenny Commissar, incredible friend, incredible dude, picks us up uh, from the hotel. And we're on our way to the studio. And Dennis turns around and says to me in Swedish, we don't have a track. I said, what? He said, we don't, we don't have a song. We haven't, got, we haven't had time to do a song. I said, well, we're going to meet the band now. I said, yeah, we have a song. So I, so I started, I went into my world and I'm like, all right, let me think, let me think. I'm sitting there, I'm like, I got it, I got it. And I started beatboxing and I started singing the chorus as well as beatboxing. And Martin joined in, Martin said, well, okay, I'm with you, I got you. It was that, we never quit, we never had much more, much of a conversation when it came to music. It was always connect, connect. And D would start, he was doing his thing and I was doing the verse and singing the chorus and everything. So we went in the studio, we went straight to the mixing board but D started building the beat, me and Martin, which I, me and Martin sit there scribbling down the lyrics and everything. And when we looked up, we noticed the boys were, were sitting there and we were like, oh my God, sorry guys, you know, so into the music and everyone just connected so beautifully. It was, it was just incredible, man. And we, we, we toured the whole of England together at a number one. We had the, 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 one of the most treasured, Forget all the diamond awards and all that stuff. One of the most treasured blessings I've got is that every single time I come off stage with 3T, Papa T would give me the phone and it'd be Mike on the other end. How'd, the, how'd it go? How was it? Oh, it was amazing, dude. It was absolutely incredible. And we did Wembley and we're doing all these things. And there was this incredible moment when the album came out and they called me and they were like, you need to look at the album. I'm like, yeah, okay. This is great. We did the video and everything. No, her, check out the album. I checked the album out and my name was placed below Michael Jackson's on the album. And it was a gift. And I just thought, well, that's it for me. End on a high note. That's it. Thanks, everybody. It's been real. It was, what, more can, what, what, else, what else could you want? You know, mm -hmm. this is what I teach. This is what I teach when I go when I'm at schools and universities in Germany, wherever I am, these adventures that I've got, I always tell people, I'll ne probably never write a book because the book would probably, nobody would ever believe me. No one would ever believe me. No one would believe the things I've seen or the things, the, the adventures I've had, but those are my adventures. This is why being a mystery is so important. Mystery means my story. History don't matter. That's his story. Let him keep it. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, this adventure that music offers you, it, it, it's in bro. You know, I've heard, I've heard stories from left and right. I've sat with Lionel, Lionel and has told me some incredible stories. I've met with, I sat with Morgan Freeman having lunch and listening to the, the, just the most incredible. And I, I give thanks every single moment because of all of this was given to me from music. Right. Opened up a you lot know, of doors. But, I mean, but 3T, I, it, to this day, they still are my, my family and I, I, I adore them, bro. It was, it was like the Beatles. It was mad. I remember we were in a hotel one time and someone pulled off, pulled the fire alarm and they wouldn't let us leave because the fans were, there were so many people outside that we, <laughs> we had to stay in the room because we weren't allowed out. That was the same thing with Battery. Man, we were in a, I remember we were in a tour bus even a gig one night and the fans was, was so ecstatic. They started to rock the tour bus, one of those giant tour buses. This thing was tipping. You know, that's what music can do. It's, it's, you know what I mean? It's incredible. Yeah, and if you look at the album credits for 3T's Brotherhood album, Robin Thicke got his early songwriting credit on that album, writing Sexual that's Attention. Right. That album, I still bang to this day tease me sexual attention anything 24 7 and it was surprising for anything. me that the album anything. didn't really explode in america like it should have because you know 3t the pedigree the family the last name alone i mean michael janet tito jackie jermaine marlon so how was it for you knowing the lineage and the family name trying to keep your cool and composure but trying to create a sound for them that would be distinctively them. It was um, there was a there was a moment in the studio where we were recording, and uh, we were recording a person in the studio, and 
that's when that person was, was singing. And that's when it hit me. And I had I left the studio and I went outside and I was in tears and, and war. And that's when it hit, not so much, I guess, for them, but for me, I got back to the hotel, I called my mum, I called my wife, and I remember saying to my mum, Mum, I just recorded a song with the Jacksons. I've just been working with the Jacksons. And it was surreal. It was, these are the most beautiful, open, ordinary, magnificent people whose hearts are so, and I'm not just saying this, if you actually have the blessing of meeting Taj or TJ or Tower, if you've had the blessing of meeting Papa T or any of them, their hearts are so wide open and so warm. You, you, you know you're in, law, you're in the presence of royalty. That's how you feel. And you, you, you have, I had to take that moment and go, for real, me? I had to, I have to, and, and there aren't that many people who have that, who have that opportunity. And it's, it's one of those moments that whenever I doubt music, I think back to those times and I've got to keep going. It, it, come on, it's the Jacksons. I mean, it, it, at that time, come on, Scream had just dropped, Brownstone had dropped their album, Timbaland and Magoo had just dropped their album because Timbaland and Magoo Studios at the time was their offices was above Epic in the in the in, in the building. Tim was just a genius, and, and these it was like that energy. But most, but but you felt okay. That's great, but I'm with I'm with the Jacksons, right? Do you know what I mean? It, 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 it's it's how do you put that into words? You can only put it into song. You can't put it into words. The, 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 it, it, the, the, it's a dream, you know, mm. and it it, it it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what anyone says, because they can't replace that dream. I that's mine, right? You know, right. but to put it into words, it's like falling asleep and walking into your dreams, and it's all real. It that's what it felt like. Mm. You know, it's surreal. It just, it just, of all the people in the world that I've actually worked with, families and people, that's pretty high on the mark. Pretty as high as it gets for me. Mm -hmm. Now in the mid nineties, we have the first wave of black British R&B groups such as Eminate, Ultimate Chaos. Shout out to my boy KG. You can check out my interview with him in audio and video form. And he was explaining how at that time, because you know, UK music scene was very pop heavy. Take That was the dominant group. So it was tough for a urban UK group to really get the same push like if it was a traditional pop group, unless it was E17, because they had pop look, but R&B flavor. So what was your take yeah. on Eminate and Ultimate Chaos and how that um, was um, difficult for UK R&B acts to really break down? I, I, wanted, I, bro, I wanted more of, I wanted to hear more of, people, of bands like Damage, KG, Eminate. I wanted more of that because, they, you know, they, they, they there was more, there was more feeling. There was more connection. There was more. There was more connection. There's a, gr a, a, a grand audience that we were catering to, and then there was a grand audience that I'm from that no one was catering to in that format. And then came Damage and Eminate and, and these bands and Cleopatra and and all of these amazing bands. And I wanted to do that too. You know what I mean? It was a it was a monumental moment. I mean. Um, there was a band back in the day that you probably would never have heard of them, and I guarantee you not many people have outside of England. But if you ever get the chance, go check this band out. There was a band called Nine Yards. Hmm. They were on the same at the same time as Eminate and Damage. There was a band called Nine Yards. <laughs> it was that moment you, you felt proud. You felt like, what? This is happening across the board, you know? And I, 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 there was a lot of the times I was in, look, I was in the pop, I am in the pop industry. 
I've been in the pop industry, uh, what you might call pop. For me, it's journalist because I've done everything from classical music to heavy metal to rock to pop. I had the song, I had the official song 1998 for the NBA. I had the slam dunk the fuck. I've done, I've done all of that. But there's a loneliness when you're of color or you're, as a black man in a white in a white environment, in a white pop environment, it's lonely. People have asked me this so many times. How did you deal? I've got a powerful family and I've got powerful roots. I'm from the Caribbean, don't quit. You know what I mean? But yeah, it's lonely. It is, and it's it is, and it has been many, many times. When these bands erupted, I wasn't alone anymore. I wasn't alone anymore. It was it, I got my people, my peoples are doing the same and they're doing it well. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a sense of pride inside of you that grows when that happens. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So how did it feel? Magnificent. 3T on one side, damage and emanate on the other. And we were always bumping into each other on tour. And it was just, it was amazing. It was just amazing. It was. Right. And it still is. It still is. It, it ain't stopping. I mean, we're still going. Right. And Do you know, I've got to tell you something. One of the best moments of, one of the most amazing moments I've had, other than with the Jacksons, was I was at a game watching a basketball, a basketball game. And Chicago Bulls was playing. And I'm a Lakers dude. I like the Lakers. Now. But the Bulls were playing. No disrespect to anybody out there, just leave me alone. But the um, Bulls were playing, and Jordan put up a three point shot. Right? I think so. I'm correct because I was I was just in awe and Slam Dunk the Funk came on. And I just sat there and thought, that's it for me. You see what I mean? These you get these nuggets of moments. Mm -hmm. So for me, moments like that, moments with like with these bands, I I, I know people want to want to hear. Is there a dark side to it? Is there this? Is there that? And you're talking to the wrong guy because I look at the I look at things for what they really are in the light of what we've accomplished. Right. And in that moment when it was happening, man, it was it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. You had Craig David. You had Mark Morrison dropping Return of the Mac. You had all. It was just you. You. It was just everyone was getting getting into it. You had Horace Brown from the States drop in one for the money. You had, it was amazing. That Melt 90s had that energy that was daily. Mm -hmm. Right, you know? right. And I want to give a mention to the precursor to MA Ultimate Chaos, Rhythm and Bass. Had the cuts, Roses, Can't Stop This Feeling. They cut Tell Me before Groove Theory, and also that was where Wayne Hector, yes, that Wayne Hector, famous songwriter, arranger, producer, Wayne Hector. That's my boy, that's my bass. bro. That's my bro. Wayne Hector's my boy. Wayne is amazing. Groove Theory did it good. Groove Theory did it good, but they did it to a point where people thought it was an original. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I, I love you for I love you for putting that out there, man. That's beautiful. That's what I mean. It's, it's, you know, there's just there's just not enough. There's just not enough of these bands that had such a huge impact. They're just not. Come on, man. Lucy Pearl, um, Envo, all these bands that just, just made music so magnificent. They just don't get heard. They don't get talked about. They don't get the respect they deserve. You know what I mean? Yeah, I I, I think agree. That, I agree because if you look at back then, the world was a lot bigger because this was pre-internet. So you really didn't know what was going on on the other side of the globe. And the one thing I found interesting with a lot of the UK R&B groups was that they would take their styling and sound cues from what was coming on in the States with, you know, Boys to Men, Troop, New Edition, but add the look and the aesthetic like they were a US group, but they were UK at the core. Mm. Yeah. That's absolutely true. Yeah, I mean, there was, I mean, man, you can, I mean, we've had these conversations, I've had these conversations with so many people. And you look back and you just, you're in awe of Donnell Jones, you're in awe of, of Omar, you're in awe of all of these guys that were just 
it was a free time. You had the space to do whatever you wanted to do. And the audience would was there to appreciate or appreciate love, as we say. Right, right. So, you know? yeah. And, and I, I just wish there was some place, something in the world where people could go and still feel that. That's why I love the 90s. The I love the 90s tours and all that is so important because it's, you know, the, the I love the 90s tours. All of these shows are coming up where they're doing the tours with the, before the pandemic. And, you know, my heart goes out to so many people who have lost, you know, but we're talking about music. But the I love the 90s tours are so important because they've got a whole new fan base of younger clientele. Because it's because it's it was a different feeling. It was a different. These days, music, as as magnificent as music is, music has now got a, a dog mark on it, whereby mm -hmm. certain labels and certain people are telling you, you don't carry this dog mark, well, we can't sell you. So wait, so I got to I got to I got to have a chip on my shoulder, a slight attitude, and talk about stuff that's no longer important in order for you to to do me a deal. They keep your deal. There's a bunch of people out there that need me to help them feel human or expressive or emotional. That's my job. My job is not to have a dog here. It wasn't like that back in the day, you know? Mm -hmm. And if anybody, if people out there watch for the dog here, if it's not you, don't let it be you. Mm -hmm. And you huh? Yeah, and you mentioned Five and Slam Dunk the Funk. Now, Five was put together by Simon Cowell, from what I heard, because he missed out on the Spice Girls, which was put together by Simon Fuller. And Five, they had moderate success in America with When the Lights Go Out, The Things You Do, Slam Dunk the Funk. And I remember Disney, they did a concert special. It was Them and Bewitched. And they wore that special out. And I was a huge fan of Five, because Five had more of a R&B edge. And I believe they did some of their stuff on their own. And I had heard that Bye 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 was originally supposed to be for five, but they passed on it and that's how Instinct got it. Now, first of all, first of all, Spice Girls was founded by a guy called Chris Herbert, fantastic human being and his brother. Uh, Chris Herbert and, and, and uh, his brother brought uh, Spice Girls to Simon Cowell and it took off from there and then they changed management and Simon was an incredible human being moved on and the rest is, is legendary. Um, but credit goes out to Chris Herbert because without Chris Herbert, that would not have happened. Mm -hmm. Chris Herbert was also the, the manager of five. Um, and uh, I co-wrote, I think I wrote like seven songs on the first album. I can't remember, but um, uh, it was, they, they were just a whole nother beast altogether. They're just a bunch of, bunch of boys from London, from England, uh, with just incredible skill sets, just out there having fun. And that was what you felt when you heard Five, you know? Um, this, the, 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 the story about Bye 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 going to Five and Five saying no, It's good that you said that because it, it's like, no, Christian and Dean made bye 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 for for for, for NSYNC. You know, Christian is a genius, genius uh, technician, bro. When he does something, when he did something back in the day, it was when he did something for Celine, it was for Celine. When he did something for it was for Five. As you get these stories that are out there, which I do understand and I appreciate, and I appreciate love the fact that they're out there. But the reality of it was that song, that band was that that song was made for the only band that could pull it off, and that was that was them. That was NSYNC. They're right. the only boys that could. And nobody else out there could sing "Bye Bye Bye." Forget it. <laughs> right. Yeah, so that's definitely the art of songwriting, where some songwriters, they'll put a song out and try it on different people and see what sticks, while others, I got this band in mind, and this is exclusively for them. Mm -hmm. Still do it. Still do it. When we work, it's like when we did the, the songs for Zayn. I mean, um, just, they're, strapped, they're written specifically for Zayn. Nobody else can cut them. And no one else would have been able to do the justice that Zane could. I mean, Zane's incredible. It was just an honor to work with him. 
I mean, I've worked with everything from A to Z on the down, on the alphabet now. I've got a couple of letters to go, but they're all worth it, you know? Mm. But yeah, yeah, there are some people that still pitch songs. I still pitch songs every now and again. But predominantly, and primarily, we, we tailor make songs for the artist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so pretty yeah. much kind of like the Jimmy Jam, Terry Lewis approach. Boom, yeah, yeah. Jimmy Jam, Terry Lewis. You're hitting all the right names because that's my people's. That's that's my influences. That's my inspiration. You know, right. my biggest inspiration is Prince. You know, mm. has always been, will always be. I, you know, right. Just, just they're a bit. They're a bit, You know, the, the, the freedom of the freedom of expression. Mm -hmm. Sonified. Right. So, what was your it take? Is, what was your take when you first heard a young Robin and then Crafton? Do you know what it takes? And Robin predated Britney and Christina two years in the States. And I found it interesting how she took a page where it was like, okay, I can do pop R and be easy, but I want to go in this whole another direction. Kind of like what Pink ended up doing after the Can't Take Me Home album on the face. And she embraced more for pop rock side. Robin took that same approach. Robin was Robin was gifted from day dot. She had a song before we did. Do you know what it took? She had a song called "Do You Really Want Me" that hit really big in Europe, in Scandinavia, and everywhere. And that's why I wanted to work with her. I heard I had heard the song, and uh, I remember I remember we were going to studio to work on something or other, um, and I was getting ready, and I heard the song on the, on the TV. And I'm like, M MTV back then only did videos, so. I heard the video went ran out. I'm like, Who's that? We need to work with her. She's amazing. And then a weird thing was I got to the studio and she was sitting there in the studio. I came in. I'm like, I just saw you on TV. You're you're, you're Robin, right? And she was like, Yeah. I'm like, Let me hear you sing. And she hit some dude. She hit some. She hit some notes and she sang. She didn't sing. And I was just like, Wow. She was incredible. From the day you hear this girl open their mouth, she was incredible from day dot, you know? And she has her own style, her own vocal skill sets. She, she, she's not influenced by, she adores, but that's a, that's, look what God made. She's amazing. She is, she is her own identity. And that's what I loved about her, I still do. And that's why she was able to transition into different genres of music and keep going and keep going. Look how many years it's been and she's still at the top of her game, you know? Mm -hmm. And like you said about Alicia, I mean, uh, sorry, Pink, I mean, she's, she's the two of them on a totally different level, different level, because they follow their own path. You know, this all, all of this all boils down to, it all boils down to this incredible adventure of, of music that, that has, has a moral to the story, I don't know what it is yet because I'm still doing it, but I do know that the freedom that you gain from being yourself and allowing yourself to express yourself in whatever way music is asking you to do, that will make you happy. That is where the memories are. That's where the moments are. It's we're from the moment, being from the past, being the moment, from the moment. Mm -hmm. and if you're looking to design the moment, design it right. You know, use your skill sets, open up, let go, because that's what we did. You know, and look how many I've seen. I got so many books with people who have given me the honor of being put in their books, and wrote about me. Like Simon Cowell wrote about me, and all these people wrote about me. I see myself as just this ordinary dude. This, I'm that nerd. I'm that dude. I see myself as just the ordinary dude who just is having the, the greatest adventure that I've ever had mm. now i've even gotten even better because i've met you i finally get to talk to you and it's crazy because look this oh i ain't got it i that shirt you got on mm. that's exactly the same shirt i was about to i was gonna wear for this crazy isn't it but but is it really let's put it this way if i had it would look like it would look kind of weird. Two guys in pink shirts talking. It would look kind of weird, like like somebody's wearing three D glasses. Something that you might remember, such as the adventure. 
don't miss the don't miss the fun points. Do you know right. what I mean? Right. It's hard to express all the, there's so many things that have happened, there's so many beautiful things musically. I've watched the transition of music. I've watched the transition of music like so many of us, like everyone from Fresh Prince to uh, Will Smith to you you name it. We've all watched the transition of music go from one genre and, and hybrid into something else, to transition into something else, to becoming something more, to see the see the the outcome give birth and life to something incredible like Kendrick Lamar or Billie Eilish or Zayn. You've watched it. The weird thing is if you sat, you've been a part of it for 30 years and watched it grow, you know, it, 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 it's, 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 you can express it in words in a song. It's hard to express it in words outright. The only thing I can say is that I hope whoever is watching this understands that one day this could be your adventure. Mm -hmm. you'll be sitting here telling that story yeah you'll be telling your story mm -hmm. yeah and before we talk about your new album can we talk about the impact of new jack swing and teddy riley over in europe because if you look at what he's done and even the k-pop movement with bts and all those acts you can just see the new jack swing teddy riley influence this is the thing. This is the thing. This is what I'm talking about. Now, Teddy's doing a lot. Teddy's Teddy's been doing a lot of uh, K-pop stuff, and uh, he's been involved. He was involved in the, that gigantic band, Girls' Gen Girls' Generation, um, which I think are absolutely incredible. I've had, we've had a lot of. I've had, over the years had a lot of success. I think we were on. I think I've been on like 17 number one albums from K-pop, uh, from Shiny to Super Junior to uh, Toy to you know you name it. It's been an incredible. And, and uh, he's been doing a lot of stuff over there because they're they're accept, accepting what, what he had to, what he has to offer. But come on, man, my man's been involved. My man's influences in Europe. You can go the Dangerous album. You can go, you know, it, it, it's it, you're going back to Guy. You're going back to Aaron. You're going back to the impact is what the impact whether people like to understand this or not. Did that seed that they planted from all the way? Through. Listen, um, people go on about Pharrell. Dude, Pharrell was blowing me away with Rump Shaker when he was 18. You know that, right? You know mm -hmm. Pharrell did Rump Shaker with Teddy Riley. Mm -hmm. He was that's that's Teddy Riley's impact. He that's Teddy Riley's impact. Find a kid as talented and as gifted and as amazing as Pharrell Williams at 18 doing Rump Shaker. That's Teddy Riley. That's the impact. That doesn't matter. It, 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 in Europe, it was it was probably it was probably bigger than people thought. It was probably bigger than it would appear in America. But Guy and 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 the, the New Jack Swing movement, it was enormous, dude. It was, it was, it was light. It was enormous. And you couldn't go nowhere without hearing New Jack Swing. Mm, you definitely could not go anywhere without hearing nowhere. New Jack Swing. And it was interesting to see different countries put their own spin on it. Like all of the Swing Beat acts out of the UK, out of Holland and saying, we're going to take this American style, but add our own localism, cultural flavor to it. Mm. I mean, you, you couldn't go anywhere. It was, it was, the impact was so big. It was in every, it, every, it was something and everything was used, had a piece of New Jack that had a, a, a the, either the, either the hi-hats or the hard snare, or, you know, it was always something that you knew where it was coming from. You knew, you just knew, okay, it, it's, you know, and to show you how long this, the, 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 the impact was, you could come up to Black Street, no diggity was it was just it just kept it just kept coming you know what i mean it's like um um there's another sound this is the style that was absolutely don't know if you remember a song called uh doing the butt yeah eu go go that sound it was over it was bow <laughs> That was over. It was the, I think, we, 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 you remember, we didn't have the internet, so we didn't really know 
what it was ha- what was happening across the water unless it came through MTV or you know that kind of vibe. But I'm sure if we had internet back then, you would have been able to see how massive the influence of American music and the influence of, of just vibe, what you guys did to Europe. It, it, it was it was huge. It was it was blessed, mm-hmm. you know. And in, and there's not one person in Europe can say they're not forever grateful because they'd be lying if they said they weren't. Yeah, because I know those U.S. imports was not cheap and when reggae and everything started to cross over in the states it was like wow we got this going and that going but there were some uk acts who i felt should have broken in the u.s but didn't for some reason i felt miss dynamite should have broken the u.s i felt that some solid crew should have broken here in the u.s and i definitely for sure thought once 50 50 by lamar got some spins that he would break in america as well yeah, I agree with you. I totally agree. I, I, I Miss Dynamite was, she, God, man, how amazing was she? I mean, she still is. I bumped into her a few years ago at the studio. What an amazing woman. Um, yeah, man, I mean, there were so many bands that she, I, I, I feel as though, I feel as though had we have had the, 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 the openness of the internet and online streaming and stuff, I feel it would have given them a greater opportunity. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But back then we didn't, so you can't really try the spill milk. But man, the impact that those bands had it's yeah. legendary. It's people like us, it's people like you that keep them. Do you know that it's people like you telling, re- relating them on, on podcasts like that? You're keeping them alive and you're keeping their dream going. And I've got so much respect for you for that because now I know I'm not the only one. No, like I said, and I'm a love of all music and this group down men, New Jet Swing Forever, we have a lot of members that are from the UK. So that's how I got hip to Eternal Damage, Eminate, a lot of acts that never really broke here in the States, but they had a big, strong buzz. That's why I was so happy when Craig David broke through in America with the Born to Do It album, which I still bump. And how mm. when Rewind came out with Off for Dodger, it was the birth of Two Step, which was a derivative of Jungle or Drum and Bass. Um, yeah, well, I mean, Drum and Bass is Drum and Bass. Drum, you got Drum and Bass, you got Jungle. It's massive. You got uh, Two Step. Two Step is a, is a derivative of Garage, and and um, there's a lot of bands, a lot of bands that were doing Garage and R from D and them not. They, they, I mean, there's a there's a song on Arthur Dodger's album uh, uh, by a dear dear friend of mine called Michelle uh, uh, Michelle Scoffrey. And if you know the Do- Arthur Dodger album, it's a shout out to Michelle because man, now Michelle is part of one of the heads of PRS in the UK, which is an angel, which is a queen, queen thing. But the the, the, the the way that Garage and Two Step was given open always to artists like that you could actually sing you could take gospel you could take rb you could take anything and you had this space where you could fit this amazing these amazing vocals on it was craig david you could be a dj you could be an mc you could be a what what you could be whatever and you if your style was correct you, it would get appreciated and and it's the good thing is just to see that it's still going we just had a number one with um my, my bro robin m we just did a click uh, the song Wavy, and another song called Google Me with Anika and uh, Miss Banks. It's just, it's still going. It's still happening. It's just that it's not in that mainstream picture anymore, you know? Mm. But, the, but the, the thing that I think is important is that these artists, Eternal, Cleopatra, uh, even All Saints, you've got that, like Damage, Cage, all my boys, all those people. They're part of the stepping stones that have taken us to where we are. The stepping stones are, they are not his story, they're our story, and they should not be forgotten. They should be revered, they should be respected, and they should be like the golden classics that we, you've got to keep them there because if you're a songwriter and a producer and you don't do your homework, one of the biggest things as a songwriter and a producer is know your history musically. Right. And this is our history. These are the greats, man. These are, to me, these are the great. You ever heard, listen, there's a girl, there's a band called Cleopatra. And the girl in the band, the lead singer was a girl called Cleo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
and she was probably at the time my favorite vocalist apart from Misha Paris of course mm. she was like my my favorite vocalist yeah incredible vocals. but if she had tried to do that stuff to in 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 if the genres that are out now, the, the areas of music that is being focused on now, that would happen. That's why the 90s were so important. That's why you're so important, because we can't forget that. They, they still keep the clubs banging. Yes, they definitely do. And I would be remiss if we did not mention the cornerstones of the UK R&B scene, the Brit soul scene of the mid the late 80s, when you had acts such as Five Star, 52nd <laughs> Street, Sade, Loose Ends, Soul to Soul, Ooh. and how they were responsible. In a city. In a city. In a city. How they were responsible for all of those acts we mentioned, like MA, Damage, Ultimate Chaos, for UK RB to flourish, brand new heavies, and most of them really broke big over here in America. Galliano. You had you had Galliano, you had brand new heavies, you had come on, you could the list. You could go on forever. The, the impact. The, the, uh, there was a there was an amazing vocalist. She she was she had one of those people that crossed borders. And nobody knew she was white. Nobody cared when they found out. Lisa Stansfield. Mm -hmm. Been around the world. Incredible. Still hell around yeah. Around the world. Still banging the Mark Forty Five Key Mix. Still a banger. And she tore it down at Showtime at the Apollo here in America. And she's a bad she's woman. Nobody and nobody cared because it was about connection, it was about music, you know. And I feel like my the reason I'm still in music is not only because I adore what I do, it's I've got to, I, I, she's still got work for me, you know. She's still got me, I've still got stuff to connect to people with, I've still got to connect the dots, you mm -hmm. know. Because somewhere in those little, somewhere in the rough, there are diamonds that the universe needs. That's my job to find. Them. Right, because if you look at Lisa Stansfield and everything, go back to the whole Northern Soul movement with, because uh, I didn't know about the Bee Gees pop success in the UK until their documentary that came out over here. And then we look at Lulu, then we look at Wham, George Michael, Dion Estes was the basis for Wham. George Michael crafted the Spell album with Heaven Help Me, which was a big hit for him. Then Phil Collins, Genesis, Beatles, Stones, all Culture Club, Boy George, how all of those acts love and revere U.S. R&B. You still also the thing that a lot of people don't. Uh, there was a huge influence from the U.K. And we're just talking about the U.K. There's, you know, you've got influences from Germany, Italy, you've got students from Scandinavia, Denmark. There is, but the, one of the biggest influences from the U.K. for me was the ska music, and that was bands like Special Beat, but um, who a dear friend of mine who was the lead singer of the special beat was uh, Frank and Roger, who's unfortunately passed away. But um, that was growing up, you, you, you had the specials, you had Selector, you had, you, we, 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 we gathered influences from these things. We gathered influence from the, from the incredible music they made, you know what I mean? And so when people <laughs> ask me about what I do, and me, and, and they get a little shock when they go and check out who I am and, and all the stuff and then, the reason I don't see myself in that way is because I've got a lot to do. I've got a lot to do, man. And, and, and one day I'm going to be an ancestor. I'm going to make it great. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but you've got to give these guys shout outs. And I, I'm surprised. I'm surprised that we don't have like, like, I'm surprised. I know they're going to say, well, you know, just because people aren't interested. That's absolute crap. That's absolute nonsense. Excuse my French, but it is. We should have, there should be a show like Soul Train that still keeps it going, keeps the memory alive, keeps people feeling, keep going because Earth, Wind, Fire, you got Shalimar, you got every, we, you, we still, my daughter plays Shalimar. My daughter listens to, to Earth, Wind, Fire. You know, my, she's into she's into cameo, and I, I'm in awe. She's got good taste. My man, you see what I'm saying? But that's how we keep it going. We got to keep it. It's so important, and the stories and the memories and all the things that I've been through, they're mine. But the but the lessons that I've learned, if I can offer to others, 
connect with them in a way that they see themselves doing the same. I got you, let's go. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about your new album. My new album after, well, after a few decades, it's unfortunately my sister, who uh, I adore, uh, unfortunately passed away a few months ago. And um, the album is, she used to always say to me, um, do it, don't do it for the charts, do it from the heart. Do it for the heart. Don't do it for the charts, do it for the heart. And I never wanted to do a new album. I just do, I uh, will occasionally drop some songs somewhere, something while, while I have time, and, you know. But this album is dedicated to my sister. That's why it starts with the moment of silence. It's dedicated to my sister. So it's my way of saying to my sister, thank you. Thank you for teaching me, and for helping me and reminding me to always, at some point in time, go back to your heart, mm -hmm. you know? So it, it's not about, this album is honestly, it's, as I said, it's not about the charts, it's from the heart. It's about the songs that she loved, that I, I did that she absolutely loved. And I did it together with, with my dear friend, he's a genius, uh, Sean DC, uh, probably one of the best producers I know. And my, and my brother, who was a dear friend of my sister's, JJ Washington, who's on the album as well, and he's just his family, it's his family. And this album, I didn't realize it was going to get that much attention and everyone's get, everyone's made them into you know, some, something in each song attaches itself, it touches someone in some way. I got some people mailing me from Germany saying, there's that song, you know, this is obviously you wrote it for me. I got other people mailing me on, and that's what I did it for because that's what my sister wanted. She, that's what she felt. The album's dedicated to her. The album's called The Art of Making Music for the People. It says it all. But it's for my sister, and yeah. for all those who who were up, who were up for this, who were getting a little touch of nostalgia, feeling like they need to hear a little something different, then this is for you too. And if it's going to influence you or inspire you to do something for yourself, then it's for you too. I am as visible as music wants me to be. That's it. The rest is up to her. That's my, I, I don't do fame. You see, fame is music's stepsister or sister. She has, she has two sisters, you know? Mm. And you've got, but we'll discuss fame because music is like this beautiful woman that's seeking dress. And if you're a woman, a beautiful guy. And if you're in between, and whatever he is to you, then fine. But to me, she's a beautiful woman that's seeking dress. She has the most incredible voice. And she speaks to me all the time. She also has a sister who will chew you up and spit you, up, spit you out. And her name's Faith. You know how to deal with her? Good. Handle it. I chose music. And I know there's a lot of people out there who can try to do the same. You know what I'm saying? Create these moments. Create these moments. Create these moments. Don't forget the past. Don't forget these incredible talent, incredibly talented artists and entertainers, musicians, guitarists, drummers, the uh, violinists, flute, but don't, 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 don't lose them because then you've got air. Right, right. Be in the world, but not of it. That's it, my G. You know? Be in and, the um, world and not of it because if you're not careful, it can swallow you whole and you lose yourself if you don't have your true sense of self because they'll make out who they want you to be. Then they'll throw you in the garbage like you was yesterday's news. You know, it, it's, it's, I've had people ask me this for years. How come you've been in the music industry for three decades and you're still at the top of your game? Because I'm not on your game. I'm, on, I'm, I'm in my lane. Uh, this is my chessboard. I'm playing my game. Look, people believe there's a, a thing called destiny. I personally believe that destiny is an elevator that goes up to the clouds and then people just start falling off the edge of it. That's what destiny is to me. Choice, not chance, governs your destiny. So choose, choose, choose. You have given the art, you have give, been given the gift of free will. But if, it, if, but if you don't choose, it won't work. And if you don't, Dream, see, we have an imagination, but 
we don't break down the word. Imagination means image within a nation. You have a city in your head that is only controlled by you. But if you don't use it, if thoughts create things. If you don't use it and you can't create your imagery and be envision what you want to do, then you can't step into that world and make it come into this world. Then you can't choose for it. It all begins with a choice. Don't leave it up to other people. Choose. Mm -hmm. Choose to have the the, 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 the the adventure of a lifetime. Maybe you want to tell you this. Choose. Choose. Why? Choose now. Choose the moment. History belongs to him. That's why they call it his story. Don't try and play that game. That's why it's called his story. It's his story. You might get your name in there, but that's what, that's about it. You're a, you're a, you're an enigma. You're a, you're a gem. You're, you're, you're unbelievably gifted beyond words. You are a mystery. That's why they call it my story. In my eyes, that's how I see it. And I think that that's what all these talented people have in common. They're mysteries, man. And they created some of the most magical music. And that's not to say that people aren't doing that today. They are. They are. It's just, we see that. Mm. Don't miss and not receive that. It, it's real, you know what I mean? We had such, a, it's such an amazing time and it was an amazing time. And I just wanted to say, I, I'm taking a moment to say this now because I've done the part with my brain. I'm already thinking about music right now. I want to say thank you to you because I, I knew it was going to be a good conversation with you. I just didn't realize how much, how much passion you have for music. I didn't realize that. I do now. Yes, sir. I take great pride. I do my research, do my homework, and I thank you for this conversation. I don't even call it an interview. I call it a conversation because who would have thought me growing up in rural Northeastern North Carolina in the U.S., you know, listening to Fives, Westlife, Backstreet Boys, NSYNC, Ace of Base, Robin, that 3T, that I will be interviewing you and your songs played a huge part of my childhood. So from the bottom of my heart, I sincerely thank you, Herbie, for, for doing this, really. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's large. i tell you something really beautiful. I was coming out the airport, this was years ago, we was just through it. I was being nominated for a Grammy, and we were going to the Grammys at the airport. You know, you're going through LAX. This beautiful lady, she stopped me, she was doing my passport, she just walked up, she looked at my name, she looks at me, she looks at my name. You that guy that wrote, so quickly, quickly against my heart. I said, yeah, that's you, right? I said, yeah. She called over the other lady and she's like, I told you, I told you it was him. I told you. And she started crying. And I'm standing there looking at her thinking, oh, no, no, what? what? Beautiful lady, she was crying. I said, are you okay? She said, yeah. I had my son to your song. My son was born. And this song was played. And dude, we didn't win a Grammy that year. We didn't win a Grammy that year. We got nominated how many times? Six times. We didn't win a Grammy that year, but I felt like I won. That was all. I, it just, it, everything died. Everything just disappeared. This woman was telling me that she had a child to my song. That was it for me. I was like, and the winner is. Oh, well, it didn't matter because that's what it was about. That's those moments. You know, you blink, you miss it, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And, and it was incredible, man. I just, I don't know why I thought that was relevant, but it was, it was absolutely stuff. Just one of those moments that you just, look, years later, it's still with me, mm -hmm. you know? Right. So do you yeah, have... Man. Yeah, but do you have any shout outs you want to give before we wrap this interview and also tell people where they can go get the new album? Um, shout outs. I got shout outs galore. I like shout out to my brother D uh, DC, John DC, Mestizo, Mestizo Music. Uh, shout out to every single person that I ever met that said I couldn't do it. 280 million records later. Um, uh, shout out to my family. I, my, I, my shout outs are weird. I shout out every single person that's actually going to see this. You're my shout outs. I don't need my, the, my people, they, 
they've been hearing me shout out for centuries. These people watch it, and whoever will enjoy this, that's what all my shout outs go out to. The album's called The Art of Making Music for the People. It's about, it's a nostalgic journey. It's, it's just really and truly, if you want to feel something, feel something, if it, if, you, if it touches you, share it, make sure people hear it, and really truly enjoy it. Um, so you're my shout outs. That's it, you're my shout outs. That's, that's where the love goes. That's where the love is meant to go. And the adventure's just begun and I'm just getting started, so. Yeah, so feel the love wherever you're listening or watching this interview and you can find it in audio and video form either right here on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash beyond the album cover or wherever you stream podcasts and at the website beyondthealbumcover.wordpress.com. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a big thank you to the one and only Herbie Creechlow. And once again, this is a rare treat because he rarely gives interviews. So you all got something rare today with this interview i got one, I, Go I got one shout out I, I got one i got one shout out i got one shout out and that is to i have two friends when i when i when my sister passed away um my daughter and my son and my wife stood by me and they have done my wife stood by me and has put up with me for over 30 years and two of my friends a few friends put me help me put myself back together as it were. And uh, we've been a songwriting team, we've been a songwriting family for over 20, 20 years now. And that's uh, Mike and Ants, Mike and Ants and Edie's that's my family, make you know love. If you know anything about music, vitamins, uh, uh, conversation, it's a band called Make You Know Love. Go listen to bit of bit. Go listen to listen, listen to these guys. Enjoy. I, I love you guys. That's my family. And thanks for being there for me. Let's shout out to my boy Yoga, who's always got my back. So I can start now because now I'm getting all emotional. But I, I, I won't. But if you got, if you got the guys, make you know love. Actually, the guys who wrote with saying they wrote Pillow Talk. And uh, that's in the Guinness Book of Records. They broke every record. But they did a solo project, and go check them out. It's it's incredible. They are incredible. That's my plug. Plug in about me. Plugs about other people's music, and, and, and uh, it could go on and on and on. But what I would like to say, because uh, I don't do this very often, what I would like to say, I, I probably won't get a chance to say it again. So I will try my best to say it now. There's a reason why whoever you are was sitting there watching this amazing podcast and me ramble while Jarrell sits there in total silence and enjoying enjoying him in the moment of my organized confusion. But there's a reason why you're sitting here doing this. Something's calling you. Maybe it's music, maybe it's the art of music, maybe she's got she's helping you figure out she has a voice and it's more powerful than numbers. You need to remember something. I know you're going to think this is crazy, but just trust me on this. It's not the power of words or numbers that matters. It's the spaces in between. That's going to take you a bit of time to understand, but the spaces in between is where the moments are. That's where we're from. That's the spark. That's where music starts. And if she's calling you, take it from some guy like me. Listen. Take your part, take your place. It might be different, it might not fit with the mainstream, it might be a little different over here. But if she's calling you, get off your butt and take a stand. You will never regret it. Welcome to the game. Right. Pick up those jewels that Herbie was just giving you. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, the one, the only, Mr. Herbie Creechlow. Thank you for coming to Beyond the Album Cover. I appreciate you wholeheartedly, sir. Thank you. Thank you.